again. Hey, I'm looking at something that beekeepers hate to look at. I had two hives die on me, and so we're going to look through them and, and do kind of like a uh, bee autopsy on them. We need to find out, if we can, why they died. And the reason I do this, the reason you should too, is to find out if there are measures you can take to keep your hives from dying. So this is an interesting situation. I hope you stay tuned. Okay, so sooner or later, everyone's going to have a dead out. They're going to have a hive that died in the winter, uh, or at some point in time, really. You really should do this no matter when. It's winter now, where I'm at. And you're going to have a hive that dies. And uh, the only way that you stop hives from dying is to figure out what's, what, what was the cause of their death and to correct the situation. Most of the situations can be corrected. Uh, so the first thing you want to do before you do anything, I don't know if, you, I'm pretty sure you can see both hives, you can see there's a lot of buildup here of wax, basically. Wax and propolis and cappings and, and whatever. And then there's down that hive, there are none. Now the interesting thing is, is that if you've watched my video on hive and a swarm, that is the hive, the one on the, on the ground there, that is the hive that swarmed, and this is the hive that it formed. So both of these hives died within a week, and they both are related. These are what would be called survivor stock to common beekeepers. Um, a lot of people would, would convince you that survivor stock are bees that, are, that, are, that have survived, proven that they can survive in your environment, and that they, that they are better than, you know, the new say Varroa sensitive hygiene, the BH, BSHBs, or the Minnesota Hygienics, or something of that nature. And the fact is that, that from all indications, these two hives were susceptible to something. And I've already kind of, you know, when I was in the bee yard, I opened up the, the hives. Uh, it was at a time where it was like 20 degrees, so no bees were flying. I went around with my stethoscope because I saw all this, this here, which is a sign that they've been robbed out. Or, or are being robbed out, this buildup of wax and stuff. And you can see there's an entrance right there. Uh, this was turned 180 degrees when I found them. I keep, the, I keep my upper entrance on the rear end of the hive, and, but for purposes of this film, I turned it around so you could see that bees were, were uh, coming in and out of that hole and, and robbing. So because of that, I took my stethoscope, checked the hive, couldn't hear anything slowly. Uh, this has happened before where I couldn't hear anything, but there were bees that still in there. So slowly take the cover off and kind of look down, see if anybody comes out at you, that kind of thing. But I could see a tiny, a tiny cluster in there that weren't moving, and and uh, they were so small that they, they couldn't survive in that that cold, the, the cold weather that we have had. So uh, I know that basically what they call parasitic mite syndrome or varroa mites. Even though there is some research to show that parasitic mite syndrome is not caused completely by varroa, that there are other uh, viruses that bees can get that cause parasitic mite syndrome. But that's basically what we have here is a CCD or a parasitic mite syndrome situation, which I believe are related to varroa mites altogether. I could be wrong and further research in the future will let me know that and I keep up with it and uh, if I can do something different I will. Now both of these hives were treated with, with uh, formic acid. There were six hives in the yard, the other four were fine. Uh, these two were the only two that were related in that yard and they were the only two that were actually swarms that I caught from years ago. So that hive there is hive number seven and it, it uh, went into service in 2012, so three years ago, and it has had about six to seven swarms since then. So very healthy. Swarming is a sign of health. You saw the video earlier in the year. That's 
where that swarm came from. It was a huge swarm. It formed this hive. In two weeks, I had 20 frames of foundation pulled and completely done. They made about 47 pounds of honey, and they made about 30. These, the, the swarm actually made more honey than the other hive, and what's unusual about that is that they had to pull 20 frames. Every frame in here is new that they pulled this year. That, that of course, is, is older stuff. So, so the likelihood that pesticides in the wax or miticides in the wax killed either of these hives is extremely small. It's really so small that it's not even a factor to me because it's all fresh new wax. Some of you might say, well, you put foundation in there, it has pesticides. That the foundation that is made today, where I buy it from, is made mostly from cappings. So wax cappings are cappings that were made the previous year during a time of honey flow where you can't put miticides on anyway except for a select few that that are that have been proven to to not be absorbed by beeswax and so that argument is going slowly downhill but but let's say that there was pesticides in the foundation the foundation is such a small amount of the actual overall comb that I've never had a hive die because they had foundation in them however this year I'm gonna do a, an experiment just to find out I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a foundation hive and I'm going to do a foundationless hive. There will be more on this later in a separate video. And we're going to actually have that, uh, uh, that wax checked and see if one or the other is healthier for the bees. I'm not advocating the use of foundation versus foundationless, but th you know that's the way I, my operation works. So, getting down to this dead out. First thing you want to know is that when you get in the bee yard, if you see something like this, you know that they're getting robbed out. You know that they're weak. You know that they may be queenless. You know that there's a problem because strong, healthy hives don't get robbed out. The second thing is, like I said, take a stethoscope, figure out if they're dead or alive. If not, try to remove the equipment from the bee yard. They were getting robbed out. There is still 80 pounds of honey in here, in between these two hive buddies. This is extremely heavy. So. It is, no doubt we're going to find full frames of honey in here. But aside from mites, there could be nozema, there could be, um, it could be in serious cases of chalk brood. You could see that, you could see a hive dying from that. Uh, there, you, basically, you can limit everything down to viruses, spores, or varroa mites. That's the reasons why honeybee hives die die, except for the biggest one. The biggest reason a hive dies is starvation. Even among experienced beekeepers, uh, starvation is probably the, the single leading cause of deaths of hives in the winter. And I think that the influx of new beekeepers into the, uh, into the beekeeping arena has kind of falsely raised the, the mortality rate of hives in the winter. I think a lot of those were starvation issues, whereas, you know, they might think that they're it's CCD or mites, just because that seems to be that everybody is kind of has this fear factor about CCD and mites, and so they, they gravitate to, towards, it must have been that. Well, there are ways you can find out. So, when I check a dead out out, I open up the hive. You're going to need a few tools, you're going to need, I, I have an extra hive body, and all I'm going to do is transfer the frames into two different hive bodies. I'm in a transition period where I'm trying to make sure my comb is rotated. I know all this comb is less than a year old, so I want to keep it with this hive. So I'm going to transfer it to an extra hive body, and then I'm going to clean this down, repaint it, and then I'll transfer it back. But, of course, the first thing you want to look at is you want to just find the cluster. Now, it's easier for me to talk with it up at this level, but normally I would actually just have this on a smaller stand and get a hive tool. And then just like working hives in the field, I typically will pull one of the end frames first. That gives me room. Uh, one of the things that you want to be looking for as soon as you open the hive is the presence of dysentery. Alright, so you can see there that I'll show you a, 
a picture of this frame. It was start, it's almost all honey, but you can see up here where it was uncapped up here. All this up here, that's where they were getting, that's where the robbers were getting the honey from. In this close-up, you can see how the edges of the the cell cappings are roughly hewn. They're just, it was just tore off of there hurriedly because bees were robbing out of there. Whereas in a normal hive, you're just going to have normal uncapped cells. We'll get back to dysentery. Dysentery is a sign that the bees were sick with something, a virus or uh, nosema, serrana, nosema apis, whatever. But it's really only a sign that the bees were sick. It's not a sign of nosema. Most, uh, especially newbies, they think that if you see dysentery in a hive that it is uh, nosema. Well, just like with us, there are a whole bunch of things that can cause a human being to have diarrhea. So you want to do this fairly quickly, and you want to remove you want to remove the hive from the yard because of this robbing behavior. You get robbers coming in here to rob out the hive. If this hive died of American fowl brood, it's just been spread to every hive that had a robber that came into this hive. So American fowl brood, mites, whatever it, it may be. Uh, if the mites aren't dead with the hive, I mean, they, they typically will die with the hive, but if it's right in their last days, they will jump off and, and go, you know, somewhere else. So, basically, a lot of people nowadays tend to think that it's a good thing to let bees rob out hives so that the honey doesn't go to waste. What's better is that you take the hives and you give the honey to the, to the hives that need it, not to the strong hives that are kind of going to come take it. Because for one thing, those strong hives may have just had a disease transmitted to them. And two, the weak hives don't have enough force to go get the honey that they need whereas you can give it to them. And they'll build up just fine in the spring. So uh, don't think that, you know, a, a weak hive isn't worth saving. If, if, it's, if, it, if there's still two or three frames of, of bees on there and there's a queen, a laying queen, and all they need is some, some food, the reason that they dwindled was because they didn't have enough food, which if they don't have enough honey and pollen to feed brood, it causes them to, their, their brood to shrink to what they do have the resources for, and then, uh, and then the hive, you know, it dwindles, and there's there's no honey or pollen coming in, so there's nowhere for it to come from, unless you take them some honey. So pollen in my area, anyway, I can't say this is true for everybody, but pollen in my area is not a scarcity. There's pollen coming in long before the nectar flow and long after the nectar flow stops. So. What I'm doing here is just cleaning off the top bars. Makes it easier to handle. You can see a few dead bees up here. Um, not too concerned about those. Those bees froze while trying to walk around in the hive. Um, you can see a little bit, and I'll, I already showed you a picture, there's a little tiny bit of dysentery. That dysentery isn't a problem. If you see a lot of dysentery in the hive, that's a sign that they had a disease. Did you see? Signs of disease are that you see a lot of diarrhea. And, and you don't usually see it just inside the hive. You see it on the inside and the outside. Okay, now, here I have a frame of brood. Now you can see it's very spotty. And you can see that bees have just hatched out of there. So there will be, well, this bee has, is half hatched out. I'll show a close up of it. But what I want to show you is that among the capped cells, there are these little holes in them. Okay, and these, since the bees were hatching out, we know that bees were hatching out because one is hatching out as it died. We know that those little holes weren't from the bees that were closing up the capping. More than likely, it was a mite that crawled out of there. So this is consistent with what we call parasitic mite syndrome or CCD. I can also now see the bottom of a hive. Now, we haven't come across any sort of real cluster yet, and we're not going to. There are just random bees in here. Enough so that if the queen's in here, we'll be able to see. But basically, this was, this was a pristine prime example of what we call CCD.
That's what killed this hive. So when you look at the brood, you want to see how tight the brood pattern was, and you want to see how big. Now it's roughly that big. A lot of bees had hatched out. Okay, so what, the reason you're looking at the brood and the brood size is because you want to know, are there enough bees to cover that brood in the hive? If there aren't, you are looking at a colony collapse disorder type situation. If there are plenty of bees clustered around that bee, around, those, around that brood, you know that what you have is more is, is, is something else. Another reason you're looking at the brood is to know if the brood was drone brood or if it was worker brood. Must my hive just if it's all drone brood in there, you know that the queen failed, which is another cause of death in the, in the winter, is a queen failing. So if you if you find worker brood in there, you know you have a laying queen. And you can see how right there the pattern is pretty tight, but the the brood there's also brood down here. Now that that tightness right there suggests that they had they had uh, a queen that was okay. And and what we can't see here is that all these bees were hatching out, and there, it was kind of a shotgun pattern there. So some of the brood might have got chilled as the as the hive shrank down. But you can also see all over that bees had hatched out within days of dying. I mean, just days. So here is the second frame that had brood on it. So, and then this one has even more. And you'll notice there is no cluster uh, over this brood. So here is a third frame where they had brood. Worker brood. So they, they had enough bees to cover three frames. And when I look in there now, there's almost none in there. There is hardly any bees in here. So what, what we have here is a colony, colony collapse situation. Okay, the final piece of the puzzle. This is the bottom board. Uh, you can see there are 50, 60 bees at the most on the bottom board. If they die of starvation, you'll see a lot of bees on the bottom board. It, it'll be full of bees if they die of starvation. You can also see all the uncappings. Now the uncappings are just from the robbing. It's not; it didn't happen before. In a normal healthy hive, as they uncap honey and they use it uh, on a warmer days, they'll carry all this out. What there are a lot of is mites. In this area right here, there are probably double the amount of mites than there are bees. Okay, to put this to bed. What we have here are signs of colony collapse disorder and parasitic mite syndrome, both symptoms, both of which are caused by varroa mites and mite. Colony collapse disorder is associated with a large amount of brood, in this case three and a half frames of brood, and not enough bees to cover it. Also, if you'd, if you'd been keeping track of the hive, a sudden decrease in the number of bees, workers, in the hive. Parasitic mite syndrome, on the other hand, is characterized by those small pinholes in the brood cell cappings that just indicates that there are mites in the hives. Dead bees were found with deformed wings, uh, and of course, a lot of raw mites on the bottom board. Of course, in the case of a ventilated bottom board, you won't be able to see those mites. You'd have to look underneath wherever that ventilated bottom board was kept. But you can find them on bees, and of course, the deformed wing virus is obviously a virus transmitted directly from varroa mites to bees. Even though we didn't find a queen in this hive, we know that she was a healthy productive queen because of the worker cappings rather than the drone cappings. So we know that it wasn't a fact that the queen failed and she had in fact died less than 23 days from the collapse of the hive. If during your inspection you see moldy uh, bees or moldy pollen, bee bread really, or you see wax moth, you know, silk in between the combs, that just means that they probably died some time ago and you're gonna have to dig deeper to find out what actually caused their, their death. Tracheal mites typically are a sign, if, if a hive died from tracheal mites, usually it's you have disjointed wings that, where the two pairs of rings actually form kind of a K. And that's been known to be caused by tracheal mites I'm not positive of that. That's just what the uh, literature says, but tracheal mites can be controlled by the same methods as varroa mites. 
with formic acid. If a hive was heavily infested with chalk brood, you would of course find that on the brood frames. You would find chalk brood mummies on the brood frames, in the front of the hive, etc. Pesticide poisoning, usually from the field, is associated with large amounts of dead bees in front of the hive, not necessarily in the hive, but you see them in front of the hive, which when those foragers die, new generations of bees have to become foragers early. They go out and are poisoned by the same pesticides relatively quickly, and you just see large masses of dead bees in front of your hive. If, however, you have American foul brood or European, European foul brood, you have to recognize those symptoms as they pertain to the brood. So you will, of course, see that, but since the since you're looking at a hive autopsy, the ropiness and all that is going, it's, it's not going to be indicative of American foul brood because uh, it'll be dried out, basically. Nozema deaths have been associated with large amounts of dysentery both inside and outside the hive. However, I've noted before that that can also happen with tracheal and varroamites. So that's not a significant diagnosis there. You have to look at the midgut of the bee under a microscope and or send them into a lab to get that f final diagnosis. Okay, here I have a uh, video from a couple years back when I was doing just a documentation video and you can see that a lot of bees on the top clustered at the top. So if the bee hive freezes as they're starving, that's, this is what you'll find. If they starve while they're, while they're moving around, you'll find a lot of dead bees on the bottom board. Here you can see that that's what happens. You find all, hundreds of bees are inside the cells all the way down to the back looking for food and they can't find any. Of course, the other dead giveaway of a starved out hive would be that when you pick it up, there's no, there's no honey in there. They're out of food and that they haven't been robbed out. So you need to recognize robbing the looks of cells that have been robbed out versus cells that, are, uh, that have been eaten from the hive itself. In this video here, you can see that this is basically the main part of the cluster. As I pulled the, pulled the frame away, you can see the queen right in the center there. And this is what you'll find when they cluster, and, but they didn't have enough food to survive. So this hive starved out. It was totally my fault. Uh, I was neglectful of this hive. They didn't have the resources that they need, that they needed. This was a few years back. And because of that, they basically ran out of food and starved to death. You can see there's lots of bees in the hive. There's lots of bees in the cells. They're still clustered. I found them in January, so there was very little brood, if any, if I remember right. So you may or may not find uh, brood in any stage, depending on what time of year they starved. But this was a starvation that occurred during the winter. So that is basically what you'll find with starvation. Anyway, I hope you found this video productive. Uh, please comment below. And uh, for more, Please like and subscribe.